What's up guys, this is Kim from Einfach Machen and in this video I'd like to share with you how you can create PDF reports based on Word templates using Power Automate and your Power Apps. So stay tuned. Okay, so in my previous video, I will leave the link in the description and put it up here in the video. I showed you how you can bulk create multiple PDF reports. And this video is a bit longer, so I thought there might be some people who also have the use case that they just want to create one PDF. And for this reason, I would do a shorter video on this, focusing only on the creation of a single report and a single workflow to create this report using Power Automate, Power Apps, Word and the Adobe PDF services. Okay, let's start with the Word template. And the reason why I like using this template approach is that people or customers of us often come from a paper-based world and are in the transition to this digital, low-code, no-code solution approaches. And we can provide them with solutions by using their templates that they are used to and we do not have to design anything. We can just take these out of the box functionalities from Power Automate and use this template that is already used in the company to create the new digital PDF or Word reports. So setting this template up is quite straightforward. I found a nice blog post on this by Harshad Tepia. Hopefully I'm spelling this right. I will walk you through the process that is documented in this uh, blog. I will also leave the link to the blog in the description. And it's really easy to create a Word template that you can use in Power Automate also with Grid Data. But the first step is I have to activate the developer tools. If they are not in your menu, you can go to File and then customize your ribbon. Mark this checkbox here so that the developer tools are activated. And now I can select, for example, this column here and insert a control. And in this example, I will use a plain text content control. Click on this control, give it a property and call it date. And I will do this for all the other columns. So that's the first thing we have to do now. And for this header, I will also enter three controls we will use later in Power Automate. And the last thing that we have to do to use this as a data grid, we have to mark this whole line go on the developer tools and select the repeating section content control. And now around my columns here, there is a new control created. You can select this and this is the repeating content control. I can use this later to populate my word template with grid data. So with a table of data or an array. And I will call this rep control. But now I can upload this to, for example, a SharePoint site and use it in my flow afterwards. Okay, I've saved this template to a SharePoint site, which I've called project time tracking. Here's the template. And what we need in the next step is we need some sample data and what I would highly recommend to you when you're experimenting with a power platform and you need some sample data to test things out, leverage ChatGPT to create some sample data for you. Um, for example, I've created this prompt, create 10 rows of sample data for me in Power Apps collection format using the following columns. And as you can see here above, it created a nice collection for me for testing purposes. This is great testing data and I do not have to create this collection by myself. So here it is. I've got a nice collection ChatGPT created for me and now I can just insert this into this button. Maybe rename this to I'm tracking, create the data by clicking the button. And as we can see here, here's some nice sample data that I can use now. So in the next step, let's start over with creating our flow. As I've already built a similar flow in the previous video, I will not create this flow from scratch, but I will walk you through every step in more detail, but use this flow as my template. So I will reference to SharePoint by this prefix, project time tracking, and give it the functional name of create single PDF report. We'll save this flow as a copy. And now I will walk you through the single steps you need to perform form to leverage this PDF word exporting functionality. So the first step is that we need to change the trigger from manually triggered flow to a flow that gets triggered from Power Apps. I would always recommend using Power Apps V2. So and I need to send this JSON from a Power App into the flow. And the first step we will perform now is we use this content that we receive from our trigger and put a JSON around it. So we convert it from a string 
a gun to a JSON. Basically what this JSON expression does, you can see you can provide it with a string and this is the JSON one to many string. The next step, we need to map the columns. And thankfully we've used the same convention in our Power Apps collection as in our word template. So we just copy this format, paste it in here. And now I can map different columns. So at first I have the date column, which is also called date in our word template. And I will select the date column from my JSON by using the items property date here. And I will perform the same for each of these columns. So this is what it should look like. Always use the column, how it's named in Word, and then use the item from my JSON. And so in the next step, we will already populate our Word template. Therefore, we will select the appropriate SharePoint site where we have saved our Word template. In my case, this is project time tracking. And now I can select documents and look for the appropriate template. There it is, time tracking template. And now here are my different controls that I define find in this template and I will switch now again to the input entire array. Now I can insert the output of my select here. And the last thing I need to do is define the calendar week, employee number and the sum of working hours. We will have a look on this later. So in the next step we create a file and again select the appropriate SharePoint site. In my case I would just time tracking site. The file name I've concatted it with report, a timestamp and afterwards I've need the file extension of course and of course I need the body of my populate a Microsoft Word template. The next step we create a get file content using path action. Again we need to adjust this path because I've copied it from a previous flow. So that's the path. I don't need to change anything here. And now we're already at the convert word to PDF. I've showed in the previous video in detail how you can set up this Adobe PDF services connection but there's also a step-by-step -step guide if you have not set up this connection how you can use this in your Power Automate flow when you insert this action the first time. You have to keep in mind, I've already mentioned it in the other video, that if you start over with this action, there is a six month trial with 1000 API calls. Afterwards, you have to pay for this. And so I insert here the name from my create file action and the file content from my get file content using path. And the last step is we will send this report to a specific user. We show the advanced options with the attachment name, that's PDF file name in here and the PDF file content. We do not need this response action because this is also from the previous video. And afterwards I've inserted an exception handling that is configured run after. If the main scope, so all this stuff fails, then the exception handling runs and creates an HTML table for me based on the main result. So that's this scope here. And I've selected different columns to get information about the error. I could also let this table be automatically created, but in my case, I wanted only specific columns. I will send another mail to someone who should receive the error of the flow and afterwards the flow it's terminated to fail. I explain the exception handling in more detail in the other video. You can use this out of the box functionality and there's also a very nice blog post by David Wyatt who explains this approach in more detail. I will also leave a link in the description so that you can have a look on this. So our flow is basically set up. The only thing we need to adjust is we want to show the calendar week, the employee name and the sum of the working hours. And of course this that's so optional, but I just wanted you to show how you can use some expressions to make this functionality work. So I will insert a compose action and we will start with the calendar week. And I will use the first expression and select the output from my select and query for the calendar week. So that's the calendar week. Now I can select this here get calendar week outputs. In the second step, I would just copy this. We want to display the employee name at the header and we will use the same functionality, just change the column. And now we can select the employee name here. And the last challenge is that we want to sum the working hours. And this is a bit more challenging because we want to sum all the working hours in this collection and we want to perform this in our Power Automate flow. And I found a really, really nice approaches. So there are multiple ways, of course, was by Paul Morena, who explained in detail different approaches how to make this functionality work in Power Automate. I will leave the link in, also in this description. So in his approach, called it 
a new method and I really like this one because it's really fast. He inserts a new select action and I would just select the working hours here from my select output map working hours to the item. And in the second step, we will create this compose action and give it this format. I will copy this from my clipboard, insert compose and use the output from my working hours selection above here. And the final step is that I will use this XPath and XML expressions to use my output and sum the whole thing. So I will insert another compose, call it sum working hours. And what I now need at first is the XPath expression and afterwards I insert the XML expression and use the output from my compose action. Afterwards, insert this inside here, click on OK. That's a bad spelling mistake here. And afterwards, I can use the output of this some working hours in my populate Microsoft Word template. So let's save our flow now and make a first test run on it. And for this, we switch back into our Power App and select the SharePoint project time tracking flow we've just created and select the button here, look for the flow, select the run. And now we just need to send the whole collection into our flow. Okay, fingers crossed. So let's have a look on whether it works the first time. This looks good. Flow is running. And now we can walk through the flow. And as you can see, here's my JSON that I've sent from my Power App. Here's my main scope. It selects the different columns. Looks also good. Selects also the working hours. Here you can see the different working hours that I can select using this select action then it composes the working hours and it also sums the working hours this looks also good afterwards i've chosen the calendar week with my first expression at the employee name which is john smith could also select the project or whatever i want word document gets populated it's created and afterwards sent via email so there should be now an email in my inbox with the PDF report and also a new file on my SharePoint sign. Let's have a look on this. And as you can see, there's the new report. Let's open it. And as you can see now, here are the working hours. That's the whole workflow we need to build to automate document exporting from our Power App to Word to SharePoint to a PDF file, including exception handling. Hopefully this video might be useful for you. You have to keep in mind that there are some premium functionalities in this flow, but in most of our cases, it is worth the money. Thank you for watching and see you the next time.